by faith in Jesus. Holy I am, he's my redeemer, righteous, holy, justified, safe, healthy and wealthy, not by any good works, but by faith in Jesus who died for me. Hold on, you can't get mixed up. You're either saved by Jesus or by your good life. You cannot be saved by both. Now what people are doing, they're so ignorant, they cannot understand that the new dispensation, the new covenant, is different from the old covenant. It's a different arrangement, a different agreement. This covenant is based on faith. The old covenant is based on works. That's right. Righteous I am by faith in Jesus. Holy Greetings, friends, and welcome to Revelation in Power. Always a joy to be able to minister the word of God to you and to share with you the unadulterated word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, revealed to the Apostle Paul, which he has revealed to us. And I want to share with you today, beloved, something very interesting. You know, um, I pray, my prayer is that you will understand and your, your understanding will open. But before I even start, I want us to pray and to pray this particular prayer. We'll read it as, as the Apostle Paul prayed because it was necessary for, for them to for this to happen so people can really grasp and understand what God was talking about. Could you read that prayer, Bishop? In Ephesians chapter 1, yeah. where Paul says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give God thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Amen. And I say amen, amen. to that prayer. Because you know what I've discovered? It is so sad that persons have not yet, the eyes of the understanding has not been opened. And so people... Every day you hear them. I was listening to some guys the other day and um, on the on the YouTube, and these Hebrews, they were, uh, as the caption is, they, they dissed the, the the black Muslims in oh the, what they call them, the, some the Farrakhan people, but, the, but anyhow, and I mean, they had the word up in their face. Mm -hmm. And they showed them that people of African descent are the, are the real Jews. And you know what? I would not even debate that. Mm -hmm. I believe that when you look at the prophecies and the things that happen to people of color, mm -hmm. especially people Africans, you cannot ever argue that we, we have to be the people who God passed the judgment on. Yes. And returning, but the, the thing is, what they missed, and the funny thing is this, on the t-shirts, they're saying that they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, they believe in him. Okay. But they're also celebrating the law. All right. So they're quoting the law and saying this is how you have to live. Okay. And talking about um, the tassels on your thing and everything, and I'm saying to myself, okay, they have not, they have missed this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, it's good that they recognize Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Yes. But they missed Calvary's transaction. Then as I thought of it, I thought how much the church, as I know it, missed it also. Yes. Because I, I want to read Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8. Mm -hmm. And it says, For by grace ye are saved through faith. And that not of yourselves... It is a gift of God. By grace you are saved through faith. The law is not a faith. That's correct. The Romans Bible says, says that. that. That's correct. The law is not a faith. The law is not a faith. 
So as long as you go to the work to the law, you go to works. That's correct. And the, the, it says, not of works, verse 9, lest any man should boast. And as they listened to these guys, they were boasting of how they keep the law. Ah. That's what they boast. We keep the law. Oh, oh we don't know rape so comes on our face and all that. And I'm listening to them and said, okay. They're boasting about keeping the law. <laughs> but the Bible says we are saved. By, by grace. grace. By grace. That means on marriage is faith. That's correct. Through faith. Through faith. Therefore, if I believe that I have to keep the law, I am nullifying faith. That's correct. The Bible clearly says if you are justified, if your righteousness comes by the law, then faith is made void. Mm -hmm. And the, the work of the cross of non effect. Is of non effect. Now now this seems to be a very difficult thing for anybody to grasp. People are still convinced, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that you got to do right. You have to live right. You have to do so. And nobody is understanding that God made us righteous and he gave us righteousness. He imputed, us, he imputed it to us. I was talking with a brother two days ago, I think, and he was telling me, he knows that we are made righteous through the blood, but as far as he understands it, this righteousness, we are going to produce some good works, and that is what defines that we really have the righteousness. I said to him, Jeremiah 31 and Hebrews 8 say that God says, I'm not going to write in your heart a law like those. But Moses gave. He said, no, I'm basing my faith on Ezekiel 36, where God says, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. You shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And so he knows that he's walking, he has the spirit of the Lord within him, and he's walking in the statutes of the Lord, and he's striving to keep the judgments of God. No. if you're striving to do that, you know, and, and it's the hypocrisy of the thing. If I believe that I'm saved by grace through faith, if I believe that word, I believe that what Christ did on Calvary's cross saved me. I believe that with all my heart. Yes. Here, what I should be convinced: there's nothing I can do that can send me to hell, except stop believing that. Yes. And I was listening to a brother the other day, and he was talking about um, uh, being filled with the fullness of God and so. On. And I, I was listening carefully. But you know what is the Slant and the concept, fullness of God, of, of, of God means to be like Jesus, to, to love like him, to be like Jesus, to, to love like him, so to be morally upright. Oh, okay. That's the end of the story. I understand you now. It will make you morally upright. That's the fullness of God. That's the fullness of God. Oh, Lord. Now, let's look at scripture. Let, let, mm -hmm. I am not so bright, <laughs> but let's look at the Bible. Jesus sent his disciples. Yes, sir. He said, go, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, cleanse lepers, cleanse lepers, tell people the kingdom of God is come. Preach the kingdom. He never said to them, behave like me. That's correct. Nowhere he said that. Mm -hmm. One of them was a thief. That's correct. Judas. Mm -hmm. Peter was a fisherman who used to curse. Yes, sir. But he said, let me see, I'm going to do this. When he was departing, he said, these things I do, great and these things you shall do. All right. Go to my father. All right. He, he did miracles. say that. He, he did, did say that, that, right? Yes. Nobody's concerned that nobody's doing anything. You understand? I understand. Recently, we have a whole heap of apostles. That's all right. But nobody's concerned. With, where's my, what is the mark of my apostleship? Have I ever healed a sick? Mm hmm I'm not saying go to a prayer meeting, everybody, and say, let's pray for our brother. Have you ever healed the sick? 
Did you send him to, well, I'm not a healer, Jesus is a healer. That's not what the Bible says. That's correct. You said to them, go he, in Matthew chapter what's 10. He said, heal the sick. Correct. <clears throat> but, but, but the enemy has deceived the, the church into the holy, pious behavior that says, as long as I'm living moral in my eyes, I am like Jesus. If you're like Jesus, why, why you can't heal a sick? Well, the, the, the marks of the apostle, who, the man who walks in the apostleship, are clear in the scriptures. But these apostles and these holy men of God have no place for the signs that shall follow the believer. When John the Baptist was in prison, and he sent, because he, he said he should be decreased, but he didn't decrease, he still go on preaching. Yes. In my view, he should have gone home. Get a piece of land, plant it, find chickens, do whatever you But he gone preaching, gone talking to him. Herod. Herod and all of that. He got put in prison. Yes. His disciples, they first started following Jesus. No, his disciples. He said, <laughs> he said, men want everyone to see me pretty sick. Go and ask the man. The same person who he said, <laughs> the spirit told him, the one who he see the spirit descend on. He said, go and ask the man. Is he the one or should we look for another? Yes. Luke says, John the Baptist sent, saying, Are thou he that should come? Or, or look we for another? Yes. And in that same hour, Jesus cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then he answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended. offended. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what's funny? Jesus said, Well, go and tell John how upright you see me walking. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that, you know. Mm -hmm. He said, Go and tell him these things you see. What you see? Evidence of your faith. And the testimonies you're hearing. Yes, sir. Now, Everybody is stuck on where you know. I want to be more. I want to be more like Jesus. Why nobody saying, "Give me the sick, let me heal it. Mm -hmm. Let me find it a demon possessing me cast out this demon." But I want to be more like Jesus. What it means? I want to be pious and and to talk more like Jesus and to walk more like and to wear. Give me a break. Yes, sir. I met a young man and a, a pastor and I greeted him. Sunday afternoon, I said, how are you doing? And one of his comments is, um, your Pope likes to show off. I said, that's a great thing. But here Jesus is showing off. He said, go and tell John what you see and what you hear. The lame walk, the deaf hear, the blind see, the dead are raised. That's showing off, man. But Jesus said, sure. Just walk, come walk and walk. You could catch a boat. <laughs> you think Jesus couldn't catch a boat? Uh, you, think Jesus, you think Jesus couldn't go and raise Lazarus before and, and heal Lazarus? Before he died. He waited till he died. Yeah. Then go for his life. Showing the glory of God. But God wanted to be shown up. God wants it to be shown up. He wants us to show his glory. That's correct. You see, religion, the, and the devil, you know, the devil has duped person, duped them. That they can't, listen, bishop, people can't even be saved. Because to be saved, you have to be saved by faith. You have to believe mm -hmm. that. Listen, I have to believe that God's word is true, that God said, if you believe in my son, I'll never send you to hell. That's what God said to me. That's right. That's the deal. Because if you believe in my son, hear the deal. My son died and paid for all your sin. All your sin. Past, present, future. So as long as you keep believing, you can't go to hell. That's right. That's what God said to me. Amen. No, that's what, in my Bible. That's correct. If I you know, believe that, and put my life on that, then I have no fear. Amen. I have no fear. Amen. The Lord has given me, the Bible says, he shed his love abroad in my heart. Mm -hmm. So, wherever the love is, I'm going to do acts of love and all of yes. that. But watch me, that's not do my salvation, I'm saved. Amen. Even if I continue doing whatever crazy thing I was doing, as long as I believe that I'm saved. That's the promise of God. Now I want to know who can look at me in my brown eyes and tell me that is not true. Mm -hmm. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. No, the devil has set portions up, and this is the danger of it. If let's say I see a man drinking his life away, 
from love, I should be concerned for him and say, you yes. know, hey, why are you doing this? The man said, man, I don't know, I want to stop. Mm -hmm. I, then if I can help him in whatever way, if perhaps he, he's possessed, I can get him delivered so he can stop. Whatever it is, I've helped a human being. I've not given him salvation. That's correct. The, but at the moment I start preaching to him about his drinking, here we hear that drinking is synonymous with going to hell. Mm -hmm. And if he stop, he'll be saved. Yes. And that's the, that's the devilish thing about this amen. behavioral doctrine. Amen, amen. Because that's what we preach. I listen to preachers. I mean, they spend time on the, on the television and the radio, and they talk about living better and doing better. And they have never once said Christ died for you. And this is the only way it can be saved. The only way. Take, for instance, some of the Buddhist monks you, you read about. Those men don't even mash an ant. Yes. They don't even mash an ant. Mm -hmm. Are they saved because of that? I know some people. If they tell me this is green, I can believe them. Mm -hmm. Because of the years I've known them, I've never heard them lying. Because of that, they say. Because somebody lives upright. You see, that's the, that's the message that is carried. Yes, sir. And it's a dangerous, devilish message. Yes, sir. Because rather than people hearing that salvation comes because of the cross, they're hearing salvation comes by your works. That's right. I heard another one. He's talking, but um, somebody who preached something with the homosexual. I didn't, know, I didn't even listen too long, but, but the homosexuals, and he wanted to say that... Um, this message and the homosexuals running around saying and feel that it's all right. And he's here to say that it's not all right and show scripture. I said to myself, why in the name of heaven do you want to tell people Christ died for them? Uh -huh. What you making the issue? I wonder if you have homosexual problems. <laughs> Were you making an issue you are dealing with homosexual? I don't have to deal with homosexual. Amen. But this is not my job. My job is to tell every human being Christ died for them. Amen. My job is not to go to homosexual and say, stop doing this. Because if that's my chance, I don't even have to go to homosexual. I can go to somebody. I might have to start, have to start with me. <laughs> and that's why Jesus says, take the, what? The, the, the beam, beam out of your eye. So you can see clearly, take the mood. So if I go in after somebody, I have to ensure I don't have no beam in my mm -hmm. eyes. You understand? That's correct. This, this is when I can start talking about behavioral doctrine. If not, shut up and tell people, Christ, we are saved only by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that can save us. Amen. Nothing but what can wash away our sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's what we should, that should be our passion. That's what we should carry. So, um, tell people that. And then as far as I, I can do, if I meet somebody and I they're in some situation, or they come to me and I said, you know, you really want to do this? Say, you know, you know I, I want to be free from this. Then... It's a case for deliverance, I yes, do that. Yes, yes. You understand? I do. I don't want them to ever feel like they stop drinking, smoking, this, that you're saved. You're not saved because of that. And this, this is what 90% of church will believe. That's correct, sir. They believe, yeah, church will believe if they drink or they have sex, they're going to go to hell. Pope Emmanuel, that's true. Well, it back and carry to hell the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ died in vain. In, he died in vain. That's what the apostle says. I was talking with a young man. So he tell me he's a, he's a believer and so on. I looked at him and said, wonderful. I said, how are you saved? He said, well, according to the Bible, Jesus died for me. I said, so I said, that alone can save you? He said, no, that alone can't save me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you got to live the life. Mm -hmm. I said, so you live a good life? Yes, I live. He said, let me ask you a question. I say if a man lives different if a man lives a good life, he's saved. No, 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 that alone can't save him. I said, you just told me it's a good life. He said, no, 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 no. Um, unless you believe in Jesus, um, the way of true life, no man comes to the Father by him. I said, hold on. You can't get mixed up. You're either saved by Jesus or by your good life. Which one you saved by? I said, you can't be saved by both. You cannot be saved by both. Now, what people are doing, they're so ignorant, they cannot understand that the new dispensation, the new covenant, is different from the old covenant. Yes. It's a different arrangement, a different agreement. This covenant is based on faith. The old covenant is based on works. That's right. Bishop, even tithing, in the, look, the Lord showed me this. Tithing on the old covenant, 
was obedience mm -hmm. to the law. Tithing in the new covenant is faith. I don't tithe so that I can obey the law. I tithe because I believe the promise God gave me. All right. You understand? Amen. I, I don't tithe because I'm afraid that I'll be cursed. I tithe because I believe when I tithe according to what God promised in Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 that you will open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing yes. whoever will be to receive. Yes. So I'm tithing by faith. I yes. believe God's word. Wonderful. Everything in the new covenant is based on faith. Faith. This behavioral doctrine people teaching is not based on faith. It's based on fear. They're frightened to go to hell. They can't trust God enough. Listen. The end of the story is this, Bishop. Yes, yes, yes. Men yes. don't trust God enough that, listen, God said, if you believe my son, you're saved. If you only believe in his name, you're saved. I don't trust you enough, God. I can't take no chances with you. So I'm, mm -mm, no, 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 no. I can't take chances with you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and try and do right because I know that you're going to save me if I do right. You follow? That's very well put. Yes, sir, I follow you indeed. It's fair, it's fair based. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And fear is of the law. The law brings fear. Mm -hmm. Grace is faith. Yes. I believe Christ died for me. I believe in the blood of Jesus Christ that cleansed me from all righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that when Christ died, it was. So I asked the young man a question. I said, let me ask you a question. I said, if somebody believed Christ died, died for them, might they go and drink or smoke or do something crazy thing? And they die, are they saved? He said, no. <laughs> because they die in a sinful state while they're doing the thing. <laughs> I said, oh, let me ask you another question. I said, if a man, in his attempt to do something good, dies, is he saved? He didn't believe Christ died. But he tell, tell him, a baby fell overboard and he jumped over the sea. He saved the baby, but he lost his life in the process. Is he saved? No, he can't be saved because he didn't believe. I said, hold on, hold on. I said, let me ask you a question. What Adam did to us? Because you understand Adam, we were made sin by Adam. I said, what Adam did to us can't be undone even by good works, by no amount of good works. Amen. Oh, that's, that's excellently put. I said, but what Jesus did for us, can be undone by one thing, one thing wrong. Mm -hmm. I said, how weak is the blood of Jesus, boy? I said, how weak is the... I said, imagine when Adam passed sin on us. Mm -hmm. If we did the whole wall of good, it could not cleanse us. That's right, that's right. Jesus cleansed us. Mm -hmm. And if a man does one thing wrong, and he dies doing this thing, he's going to hell. The blood of Jesus Christ got to be really weak. <laughs> I mean, the work of the cross has to be a weak work. Yes, sir. <laughs> Once that is true, no, that I, is not true. I want to, God. People don't stop and think, but hold on. Do I understand the magnitude of the cross? Ah. Do I understand that God died to save humanity? Hmm. If I understand this, how can I be so preposterous as to sit down and say, well, you know what? It's not enough to save you. I mean, you know, he's saying to God, no offensive days to God. Yes, sir. If the, the blood was able to save the whole human race, Bishop, the whole human race. The whole human race. How many billions it was able to save them, and even before we were here. Where, how it loses power because a man's again didn't change? <laughs> how that blood loses power? That you can't save him anymore, you know, well, okay, he will go to hell. Let me say this to people. But you might want to say I'm supporting you. I don't care what you say. Hear what I'm saying to you. The blood of Jesus Christ is so, the work of the cross is so profound that as long as a person believes, even the man dies with another man on his back. Let me put it that raw. And he believes Christ dies for him, he's saved. Amen. And you, you, you tell me where, when, how you can tell me that's not true without talk, telling me about the law. You can't, you can't tell me that's not true. That's what's called grace. Like people, you know something, Bishop, like people want to put a limit on God's grace. That's what grace is. That's fear you don't need to, because under the law, he don't deserve to be saved. That's right. But grace says, I save him. Amen. No, who can get offended because of God's grace? <laughs> who in the name of heavens can say, no, I am saying God's grace will not reach that far. 
Who can say that? Who, who is so brave as to open the mouth and say, God, God's grace will not reach that far? <laughs> I want to know who brave enough to say that. That God's grace will not stretch that far. Essentially, that's what religion is saying. That's what Christianism, as you call it, is saying. Because the, the faith is not, they're not of faith. No. People are of works. They're of the the law. Ephesians they're says, of the law. you know why? And Bishop, you know, I couldn't understand why people want to hold on to this. But then the Lord showed me the scripture. God said they want to boast. Mm -hmm. Men want to boast of their goodness. Yeah, our experience, our <laughs> short experience in life confirms that. They want to boast. Christians, Christians, those who are saved by their good works, they love to boast. Boast that they did a 20-day fast, 21-day fast, that they read the Bible every morning, they, they have a good prayer life. What are you boasting about? You think your prayer life has anything to do with the grace of God? <laughs> this is what grace is. Amen. Grace is a man, well, this man has no prayer life. But the grace of God still rescues him. Amen. This man drinks and smoke, you don't drink and smoke, but the grace of God still, still, still ministers to him. Amen. That's what grace is. That's what grace is. It's unmerited favor. People show you, I'm saved by grace. You're saved by grace, but you're boasting of works. Uh -huh. You're boasting that you don't drink. Uh -huh. You're boasting what your life, how you, where you live, and you don't course. Give me a cotton picking break. <laughs> Shut up, what's there to boast about? Don't, the only thing I boast about that Christ died for me. Yes, sir. My God. boast is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I am convinced of the blood Amen. of Jesus Christ. It can cleanse to the utmost. Amen. I believe that. That's my boast. Hmm. That the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse anybody from all unrighteousness. Amen. As long as you believe. I don't care what your state you're in. I don't even care if you don't come to the state. The blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse you. That's my boast. I have no more boast. I don't boast but don't, don't drink and don't smoke. What, what, that, what, what, are, what is this to Jesus? You don't drink or don't smoke. or you, That don't make no difference to God. It's because you miss it. This is faith. The law is not a faith. That's right. We are saved by faith. It's it's right there. It is by what we are saved? Grace through, through faith. What? what the Bible says in, is in, in Galatians, the law is, is not, not of faith. Galatians chapter 3, right? Yes. It's the law is not of faith. You can't be saved by the law. And people, you know, the, the thing is, I'm not even concerned with those who want to believe that, Bishop. I'm concerned with people who have not yet believed and they're trying to prevent the people from believing that yes. Christ died for them. You understand? I do. No, let them religious people go to hell they want to go. They want to go, go. Because as long as you're justification by the law, I can guarantee you're going to hell. Because your justification is not by the blood. My justification is by the blood. Me, I have no more boast, Bishop. Justified by his blood freely. If, if when I get to glory, and let's say I was that asked. Why should we let you into the kingdom of God? <laughs> because the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed me. I have no more answer. I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You, you won't say, well, you know, well, you know, um, I believe Christ died for me, but, you know, I also did. As you also did, mm -hmm. it's not the blood anymore. Amen. As you have to mention, you also did. Mm -hmm. So do I have to say, all oh, righteousness, filthy rags? So. Even if you do something good, or you stop smoking, it's for my health. <laughs> Would that not do with God? <laughs> if I don't drink, that's because according to the, the doctors, when you drink, you destroy brain cells mm. every day. It's my brain cells I'm saving. Yes. That's not with my salvation. Amen. What does it do with my salvation? Nothing at all. If a man is sexual promiscuous, he runs the risk of, of contracting disease and all of that. Perhaps he can shorten his, his human life. Mm. It's not really salvation. Amen. Because we are saved by the grace of God. Amen, amen, amen. And this devilish doctrine, I say it's demonic, it's devilish. And you know the people, you should be preach it, they, they are sanctimonious. They always believe that they are. Because I can't mm. preach it unless I'm that, you know. Mm -hmm. See, I can't preach holiness <laughs> unless I consider myself to be holy. Yes. But I can preach grace, because 
I need grace. <laughs> <laughs> like preaching grace. Praise God. You understand? I do. So those who are preaching holiness, they consider them to be holy. They yes. seem to be holy. Yes. In their own eyes. In their own eyes. But you know what's the funny thing? Go and ask some of the relatives. Oh boy. The close kin. Oh. Some of the men who talking about this holiness, if you ask the wife, they suck the tooth. I said, some of the wife don't talk to them. <laughs> some of the wife angry. Mm -hmm. They call them all kind of foolishness. Some of the children offended at them. And but they got this attitude, shut up, stop boasting. The Bible says, lest any man should boast. Yes. God don't want anybody boast. to boast. Yeah. I cannot preach behavior without boasting. That's right. How I can do it? Tell me how I can do it. I'll be a hypocrite if I preach on abstinence from alcohol and I drink. Yes. I got a hypocrite. I'd be a hypocrite if I preach on you must love and I preach on God oh, you must love and I got a problem in love. Yes. I'd be a hypocrite. Yes. Therefore, when I preach it, I'm advocating I am I'm there. Perfect in I'm this perfect. Area. Mm -hmm. If I can tell if I tell somebody about forgiveness, I don't tell them about forgiveness, but forgiving the angels do here, I show them the biological reasons and the medical reasons and I say, hey buddy, when you hold a man, you think your body resists, your yeah. anger, your body resists, things don't kill you. That's right. You're going to shorten your life. Why is your system? Why is your system? Mm -hmm. So, man, hey, forgive the man, don't worry, though. I'm not letting him think that that's the engine with the salvation. You understand? Yes. It is not with the salvation. If I tell people God wants you to prosper, oh, sure, God wants you to prosper. It doesn't do with your salvation. That's right. Therefore, I must tell people the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that is what saves. Amen. It is for by grace, unmerited favor, we are saved through faith. Through faith. We receive this unmerited favor through faith. Through faith. To what? Faith. To works. Not of works. Through faith. Yes. God is clear to define not of works. Not of yourselves. Not of yourselves. The moment you go to the place, where you are satisfied, you're at peace with God because you don't do anything wrong. Your don't doing wrong is the same as saying, I am doing right in this context. And God says, it's not of works. It's not of doing right or not doing wrong. As long as you go there, then the death of Christ means nothing. You know, you know, we don't see miracles in the church. God, Bishop, trust me. Those churches that preach behavioral, that preach good behavior, they don't see any miracles. They make a lot of nice, spit and beer face, put their hand on their head, and nothing happens. You know a girl that came here who was going to a, a, a meeting all the time, every time the whole set of nice, nothing happened to her. And somebody from the same meeting said, What? You really want to get healed? Go down by Beacon Ministries. That's right. One of the pastors, in fact. One of the pastors drew her aside and said, go and see um, Bishop London at the time, she said. That man got a special grace of God to heal people. Because she was by grace. Mm -hmm. You see, if I ever examine myself mm -hmm. to say I have to be good enough, I will never have confidence to lay hands on nobody or Wonderful. to speak a word or Wonderful. give anybody a miracle. Wonderful. But I don't, I don't look at myself. Wonderful. I look at the grace of God. It's by His grace. And by His grace, I see all kind of miracles. Praise God! I don't ever examine myself saying, "No, well, I'm. I got to put myself right in order." Because let me tell you something, brother. When you can put yourself in order, when can you put yourself in order? That's like you know the old them saying. They say, "If you want catch up, or like you get it, throw rice on the ground for them to count. <laughs> Maybe throw a gallon of rice where they can count them." Well, your fart's gonna be like a gallon of rice. <laughs> you, you pick up and you pack it. And one drop, you gotta put it back. This is the law, like you know. The law is they give you a gallon of rice to count. So if you want, I think you should try it. If you want to keep the law, take a gallon of rice and count them grains. Count them. <laughs> Go one, <laughs> two. If you can count them, you can keep the law. Three. And if one drop, you got to put it put back all and start over. That's what the law like. No, I ain't going for that fool. I said the grace of God. Amen. Oh, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Amen. By the grace of God, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, 
Any demon comes, I can deal with it. Because by the grace of God, <laughs> by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in God's sight. I am saying this, and I'm saying it loudly, and I will not stop saying it. It's demonic, it's devilish. Amen. Any minister who preach works is supporting Satan. Amen. He's, he's supporting the devil. Yes, sir. You know what ministers do? Their best message is to make people come to the altar and cry. So they don't say, okay, I said, we have, I have a church. And I see a brother who is struggling in a particular area. That hindering his natural development in his world. That's why I see him smoking. I, I, I am conscious based on what the, the doctor said that he's destroying his lungs. I called him and said, I see you smoking. You're saved. I'm first going to say, I want you to understand you're saved. If you don't stop smoking, you're still saved. Amen. My question is, do you want to stop or you, you like it? Most of the men say, you know, I really want this thing, you know. Well, I can help you. I don't have to preach about cigarette smoking in church. I help the brother if I, if I help him. And the brother, and he kicked it, he said, thank you, boss. You know, you minister to me and I was able to do that. Why preach in church? Why want to make him feel guilty? Mm -hmm. Bring condemnation. That's what, that's what. Then I condemn him. And the man said, he ain't coming back. Well, why, why, why you would go back? Because you're preaching with it. You don't even know what you're going through. You don't even know oh, yes, right. the challenge I'm going through in my flesh with cigarettes. You don't know anything about it. You don't understand the challenge this man going through with alcohol or the challenge you're going through with this thing. You, you open up your mouth, preaching and condemning a man. Mm -hmm. And you have issues in your life. You may not have that, but you got some issue. You understand? I do. I sure. If he asks his wife, she will say he doesn't, he don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> he don't pay attention to me. <laughs> he, he, don't, he don't care for you enough. <laughs> Some of you don't have, don't have sex with the wife properly. Yes. Open up more preaching all that stripiness. I'm going to ask the wife, I'm going to ask her, say, are you sexually fulfilled? She might say, yes, she want you feel bad. Talk by the grace of God. Talk. Amen. There's nothing to boast about. That's correct. God, the Bible says, less in, in anyone. Mind, God, in other words, God says, I don't want anybody to boast. Amen. Nobody must open the mouth and say, you know, I'm saved because I did so, so, so. Nobody must say that. They must say, you know what? I did not mean for Jesus. I go to hell. Yes. And the next one is, me too, my, me too, me too, me too. Me too, me too, me too. Amen. So we can lift over and say, thank you, Jesus, for saving Amen. us. And nothing else to boast about. <laughs> Behavioral doctrine is demonic, it's devilish. It is demonic. And pastors should be ashamed of preaching it. They're going to hear it, you know. But I tell you, men will start feeling, they're going to holler and holler for a while, but they're going to start feeling bad in the pulpit. When they start preaching and beating mm -hmm. up on people, mm -hmm. they start feeling bad. Mm -hmm. They start feeling, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. Why, why are you doing that? You, when Christ went to Calvary, oh, gave his life, his, shed his blood for humanity, and he's saying, listen, Sim, just believe on me and you'll be saved. Just believe, just believe. And you join him with Satan to say, no, that's not enough. Mm -hmm. You've got to live right. You've got to do right or you can't be saved. You know, Sometimes I wonder if it's really people want people to do right. A woman will come and complain that her husband just drink and smoke. She says, Pastor, why do you stop drink? Why do you stop smoke? Why do you stop party? She don't care about salvation. Yes, yes. She wanted to stop drinking and smoking and party. Yes, yes. Once she stops, though, she, she don't even need to go to church anymore. You know? Yeah, once he, he, he morally <laughs> satisfies her, yeah. And he behaves himself, mm -hmm. and when she says she wants this, he give her. Yes. Then, you know, she's not, she's not concerned. The salvation. This is the truth. Yeah, well, we've experienced that so many times. Women who are complaining about their husbands drinking. Take it on to the world now. Mm -hmm. If our rum shops close down, cinemas, everything closed down, and people stop stop doing any immoral things, mm -hmm. the society gets so good about doing everything right, right, right. People think they don't need to tell people Christ died for them. You know? 
That's how the church's position is. That's a whole demonic position, as you indicate. I remember talking with somebody in the States, and they told me that a popular television personality is saved. The lady is saved. She does this in Africa, and she gives this to children, and she gives this, and she gives that. I said, why do you think the person is saved? Look at all the things she does. <laughs> I do you think that could save anybody? Later on, you realized the person, the same person, person said that there are many ways to God. Ah. I said, okay. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> because my Bible tells me we are saved by that Christ Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Mm -hmm. We can only be saved. Because of the work Christ did. Yes. Even those who think they can keep the law. People are so ignorant. You don't, you don't realize you can't keep that thing? How you keep law? <laughs> law is going to kill you. Uh, uh, I know the, the extension is, um, well, when we fail, if any man sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus. So, we do our best. But because of the flesh, we will slip now and again. You know, people don't understand this whole thing about advocate and having an advocate with the Father. The Bible says, He forever maketh intercession for us. Yes. You know, it's a, you know, it's a perpetual intercession. You have to understand the scripture. On the day of atonement, the high priest went into the thing, sprinkled blood and made intercession with the people. Holiest place. All right? For all the people. All the people. He confessed the sins of the people. He said, not the sin, but... The high priest came in, and he sprinkled blood on the horsey seat in the, in the Holy of Holies, and he came out back, and he had to do that. This high priest we have went in with his own blood. The Bible says, blood. you know, in Hebrew, with his own blood. His own blood. And when the, the laboratories in heaven examined it, mm -hmm. they recognized it was perfect. Yes. And he sat down there with his own blood. Yes. And his blood forever making intercession. Yes, yes. It's not about me saying, um, people think about me saying, God, I ask you forgive me. Bill, Bill, measure. That is full-time ignorance and stupidity. I tell you why. <laughs> you ever got to the, you ever did something wrong and you ask God for forgiveness? But fifty times? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For the same thing? Yes, sir. Why? You already believe God ah. forgive you. Excuse me. So it's not who asks, it's who believe that Christ forever in the seat for them. Yes. Now watch why I believe. That if I do something contrary. Before I finish, that's already taken care of. Yes. That's my confidence. Yes. Now, the other person believes they have to ask God, Lord, I pray. I pray. <laughs> Lord, God is sorry. God cry, Lord, and knows what the Lord I pray. <laughs> Jesus. Somebody will come by you and rub your back. Oh, okay, brother, Lord. Let like, God help you get forgiveness. And nonsense you're going away. You're calling God a liar. God said, I'm going to forgive you. That's right. God promised God. I imagine God said, Watch me. I can even hold some things against That's right. The sins and iniquity I remember no more. No more. Take no account of them. Because I take no account of them. Mm -hmm. So this way you're supposed to rest. Oh, God and take no account of them. And I go, I'm That's wrong. right. That's what God wants you to do. Believe him. But you see, people don't believe that. Mm -hmm. It's too much for them to believe. Mm -hmm. They believe God like them. Yeah. Men believe God like them. Yeah. Men, you know, I would not forgive that. That's why you know God. Mm -hmm. They... Them people don't, I, those churches don't know how glad I am they're not God. <laughs> <laughs> why if some of them was God? I know some of them wanting, but why God is killing this man? <laughs> Watch me. God can't kill me. He sent me to deal with you. <laughs> <laughs> he sent me to set you free from the ignorance that we were taught. You, you know, here what, people don't, if they study this thing, when the why you brought church to us. It was not with the intention to get your soul saved. Mm -hmm. Not to get no slave soul saved. Was to teach them, help, was to ensure they can behave right, so they can control them easily. Yes. 
Because when you got 500 white in a in whole a country, country, country and you yeah. got thousands of black people and you can keep them in captivity, you got, got something to affect the mind. That's correct. So if the objective of religion was to do that, was to keep them in subjection mm -hmm. by telling them you got to do right. And telling them, but if you don't do right, you can go to hell. Yes. So the fear of hell made them do right. You understand? Yes. Now the same spirit that came over even after we under, we read the word because the, some people even think the white people gave us the Bible. No, the white people didn't give us the Bible. No white man is so bright to write his Bible. Nobody's so bright. He, he held the Bible on his arm and he spoke to my four parents and then he had the principle, anything you want to hide from a nigger, nigger hide it in a book. But when you start getting niggers that could read like me, you can't hide it in a book anymore, I'm going to find it. And when I find that what you told me is not what the Bible said, yes. I have a problem with you. So some niggers not like me, they're not going to read that book ah. because they preach that behavioral doctrine all through, over all the, years. Through the years. These niggers will not stop and say, hold on. Let me check the Bible for myself. Yes. They preach a sermon with somebody preach. And they will not say, let me examine the word. That's not what the word is saying. Yes. So, okay, this other ignorant nigger named London talking. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop and see what this man is saying. You, you follow? I do. They're not doing that because they want to, the same spirit says, here, you stay with behavioral doctrine. The white people wanted that so that slaves can behave right. Oh, yes. By the same token, it was not to bring us to God. Now we have the Bible. We understand Jesus Christ died for you. We understand redemptive work. So don't bring that behavioral doctrine on me. I, I'm saved by grace. Amen. And God raised me up to deliver people who were bound in that behavioral doctrine. Yes, people sir. People were thrown out of the church. People who do not even come in. Yes. Because they say, I can't behave right. That's right. You know, brother, I don't know how to behave right, so I can't make it. You know, I, I, I'm not qualified. And they got a few persons in there set up with a sanctimonious self, saying, well, you know, you got to get like me before you can come in here. But God raised me up for y'all to call y'all hypocrites, whitewashed sepulchers. I am bold, I have no fear. Because you have to repent, you have to stop, you have to say, go for a congregation and say, listen, we did the wrong thing. You're saved by grace. If you're going to drink and smoke, you're still saved. You've got to tell them that. You can hurt yourself. If you go, you can damage yourself. You, yeah, but you're still saved. We must tell you that it's about Jesus Christ. You've got to lift up Jesus in your church and stop lifting up yourself. It's by his blood we saved, man. Amen. By his grace. Amen. Bishop, the miracles I do is by the grace of Jesus Christ. By the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Never one day gonna say, you know, well, because I fasted and I prayed and, you know, because I set myself apart. I'm not telling that lie. <laughs> it's by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. By his grace, I can do that. Nothing else. And because I, and because I know of his grace, it gives me boldness. Yes. I have the courage. Yes. Because I know of his grace. I know his grace is by his grace I can do it. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is I do it. By his grace. And every time you see miracles, praise over God. and over. You know, <laughs> oh, we were to talk about something, you know. Um, the Lord told me something to do something. And I want your faith to be in Jesus Christ. And to know how much he loves you. Because God responds to faith. Let me explain something to you, my friend. You are not getting anything from God, but by faith, through faith. Your salvation is through faith. The Bible says, I want to read a scripture. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. I want to read the latter part. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove thence to beyond the place, and it shall remove, and, and listen, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. You hear the word? Yes. And nothing shall be impossible to you. God told me to call these seeds the seeds of all possibility. Seeds of all possibilities. The seeds of all possibilities. Now, anybody, I'm putting this out to the, to the public. Anybody, the seeds of all possibility. Anybody who will sow a seed into this television to further the gospel. Now, if you if you believe we're doing the word of, work of God, we're telling people how Jesus loved them, telling them the love of God. Anybody who will sow a seed into this ministry of seven thousand dollars a small seed we'll give you a packet with some mustard seeds it there will be the seeds of all possibility and let me tell you by the word of the lord you will take these seeds 
and whatever you desire to be possible, supernatural, that, that it will happen, that you'll get a miracle, whatever you desire, it's going to happen for you. Whether it be healing, whether it be deliverance, whether it be victory in your finances, whether it be victory in your home, whether it be a situation where you, you don't experience peace or you want increase in what, whatever is there to be seeds of all possibility. The scripture is based on uh, Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, the other part. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. These seeds, what they are, a point of contact for your faith. Because you have the seeds of all possibility. And in case you know some people, let me help you. Because you hear all kinds of, people talk all kinds of ignorance that they don't know. You know how your ministers talk about pure blessing things and give people well, you need to shut up you don't know better. When I bless something, listen, Bishop, when we bless bread for um, communion, communion, the bread stays there. My wife had bread there was blessed for what, six months. Not in the fridge, it is not mildewy. Recently, and you can try this for yourself, recently, I told the saints to do something. I said, get some rice cook rice and in case you think I'm crazy you try this get some cooked rice take one spoon put it in a container take an next spoon put it in the next container and I want you to speak to one of the set of the rice and tell it it bad things tell it oh it, it ugly you stink you sour say that to one say to another one you're nice you're sweet you're this say nice things to it and leave them for three or four days and you'll see what happened to them I guarantee you that in front of your eyes, you will see the one that you said the bad things to, what will happen to it. And the one where you said the good things to, it will be different. So in case you think I'm crazy, and you don't follow those uninformed, crazy people. Who, some people just, they call some people here, I talk about this mustard seed. They say, here we talk about seed. And, and people tell him, but bring things and all that. When I bless it, it is blessed. Amen. Now, I don't know, but those are the people. But hear what I know. I know when I speak a blessing on something, it is blessed. And God stands behind and backs it, backs it up when I speak it. So when I speak that word and call those seeds, the seeds of all possibility, I don't know what you decide to be possible, what you want possible in your life, but let me tell you something. When you take those seeds to your home and you apply it wherever, you will see the power of God. I'm telling you, God's going to back me up on this. And you will sow a small seed to help keep this gospel in the air of $7,000. That's a small seed. But I tell you, the things God is going to do for you, they'll be awesome so i challenge you to do that this is not you're not buying us a seed this is your faith you're saying i believe that's a man of god i believe you give the word of the lord if you don't believe it don't do it if you believe that you come to the office run down say i'm gonna sow that seed into the ministry into the ministry if you write a check write to fill the lot of ministries that's the ministry under which we preach this gospel and we can preach this gospel and you sow that seed beloved it's a small seed but your harvest will be awesome God tell me, they shall be the seeds of all possibility. We have some testimonies concerns. Bishop, could you give a couple of testimonies? In December 2012, I responded to a seed challenge to sow for 12 mustard seeds. That will give me a great Christmas. I put one mustard seed in my shoe and believe God for shoes to my entire family, myself, husband, and six of our children. Mm -hmm. All of us received new footwear as gift from different friends and relatives for the Christmas. Wow, wow, wow. I received... 12 pairs. <laughs> my first 12 daughter pairs. received four pairs. My second daughter, three pairs. My third daughter, two pairs. My husband and our three sons, one pair. I put one mustard seed among clothing, and each of us received new clothing. Yes, sir. I put one in a handbag and received two handbags and three purses. Yes. I put one in my purse, and God caused me to always be able to have money in my purse. I put one among bed sheets. We received some new sheets for the Christmas. I put a mustard seed in the food cupboard. We enjoyed a well-stocked cupboard for the season. I put a mustard seed in a hole on the plyboard wall for the wall to be renovated. And God provided for us to have a concrete wall, replace it before Christmas. We also received a cupboard in the kitchen and a new sink. I put one in our shop and the Lord miraculously kept the shop going even when things were so rough. I put one among kitchenware. We received an array of stuff, bowls, plates, buckets, food covers, food baskets, and cutlery. I told my neighbor about the seed I sowed. And she asked me for a mustard seed. <laughs> she wanted two things for Christmas. Peace in our relationship with her husband and food in her husband for the season. January 22, 2013, she told me, 
that since she had that mustard seed, she never had such great peace with her husband. And since then, food just couldn't seem to run out. Finally, I put one mustard seed in part of the roof of the house that covered the children's bedroom. It was made of zinc, was old, in some place it was loose. When the rain fell, it came in. The end of the matter was this. God supernaturally provided complete new zinc and wood, everything. When my husband came home one evening from work and he looked at the roof, he said, what happened? I told him I must have seen that done it for me. Praise God. Amen. It's the man of God is faith. Faith. And this is what should be. When Jesus said, when I come, will I find faith in the earth? Faith. People will experience. You know, when I preach the word of God, one of the things the Lord told me, I always go for miracles. You know yeah. why? It confirms that what I'm saying is true. Yes. Because he will he will back it up. We just preach about Jesus. God will back this up. That's what it says. Confirm the word. He will confirm your word. He will confirm. With the signs following. With the signs following. Yes. You will have a testimony. You will be able to say, you know what? I did that. And I have a testimony. So ensure you get there quickly. Get your mustard seed. And you will have a testimony. You're sowing into the ministry. Beloved, every time you see us in the air, it's money. So you may wonder what happens. Your money going to a good cause. So, but listen, your harvest may be greater than your seven thousand dollars. Those who still want the desire, the, the free blessing cloth, still come for it. It's still there. It's still free. But ensure you get your mustard seed. Now, Lord told me to start the blessing service, beloved, and I want you to. When you're coming the next time to the blessing service, I want you to bring with you bread and water. This Wednesday when you're coming to so I want you to bring bread and water. I tell you what the Lord showed me. The Lord showed me that he will remove sickness from your midst. In the word of God, he says, I'll bless your bread and water and remove sickness from your midst. I examined the scripture, I studied in the Hebrew. You know actually what, what would God actually do? He's going to change your DNA. God will change your DNA. What does that mean? Doctors tell you that uh, things are hereditary come down your DNA. Some people say you are a family sick. It is written in your DNA. But watch this. God will change it. So what affected your four parents will not affect you. I say this by the word of the Lord, what affects you if your parents will not affect you. You bring a bottle of water and a loaf of bread. You bring it to the blessing service on Wednesday between 11 and 12. And watch what God is going to do with your health and your family. And you will not have that fear. You will move from your heart. That you will not have that fear anymore. That what affected your poor parents will affect you. Some of you are afraid because your grandmother died from this, your mother died from this, and you're afraid you'll die from it. Let me tell you, it will not happen to you. You do what I tell you. Bring the bread of water, bring the loaf of bread and that bottle of water. Your life will not be the same. Tell your friend, tell your neighbor because be concerned about them and let them come. Wednesday, between hours 11 and 12, and watch what God's going to do. You know what? Ants Grove. Here we come. 17th, 18th, and 19th at Breezy Point Lounge. We'll be there Three nights, three nights at the Breezy Point launch, and it's gonna be awesome. Grace awakening, my friend, you gotta be there. Come out, your life will never be the same again. Now, until the next time, remember, just love you. God, my God, love you so much, He gave His Son to die for you. My friend, believe it, receive it. Believe, just believe in your heart that Christ died for you, and confess that God raised Him from the dead. Don't worry about ignorant people. You believe that, and you are saved. But, uh, man of God, I don't know how to change my life right away. Forget about changing your life. Here we, I'm telling you, just believe and continue to believe that Christ died for you. Don't go anywhere where they change your faith or shake your faith. Come and understand what God has in store for you, the goodness of God. God bless you, my friend. Until the next time. Righteous I am by faith in Jesus. Oh. Redeemer, righteous, holy, justified, safe, healthy and wealthy, not by any good works, but by faith in Jesus who died for me. Righteous I am by faith in Jesus, holy.